So right now, I'd like to introduce uh, Dr. Karen Boyer, who will be leading our student poster recognition. Thank you, Captain Wilkins, and good afternoon, everyone. I know it's been a long day, but we are almost, the form is almost completed. No, that's a good thing because we've had a very, very productive day, and I've enjoyed every moment of it, and I hope you guys have also. I'm Dr. Karen Boyer from the Office of Minority Health and Health Equity. I'm a health scientist, and I'm here to give recognition to the two poster presenters we have here today. But before I do so, I would like to take a moment to ask the poster presenters to introduce themselves and tell us a little bit about their work. Rebecca. Okay. Hi everyone. Um, my name is Rebecca Jung, and I am a master's in public health epidemiology candidate, uh, currently studying at Columbia University in the city of New York. And the title of my project is Negative Impact of Childhood and Adolescent Polyvictimization and Complex Trauma Formation in a Cohort of Youth. So... From previous literature, polyvictimization is defined as chronic and concurrent um, exposure to multiple forms of maltreatment, and polyvictimization can have multifaceted consequences when it comes to adolescent development. Um, and my the purpose of my study was to first examine the relationship between polyvictimization and the different. Um, life domain outcomes, including school performance, um, self-perceived strengths, and uh, trauma symptoms in the youth. And second, to examine any differences in life domain outcomes um, across different victimization groups. And lastly, to examine the cumulative effects of polyvictimization. So in my study, um, polyvictimization exposure was significantly associated with um, higher overall scores across all domains, which indicated decreased levels of school performance, um, lower youth strengths, and also higher observance of trauma symptoms in youth. Um, more research is definitely warranted in this demographic in order to further examine the potential relationships between different life domains and victimization experiences such as um, behavioral, cognitive, language development in adolescents. Um, and also I would just like to point out uh, during my poster presentation um, out in the lobby area, a lot of people have asked me, you know, what's the difference between ACEs then and um, how, you know, I defined polyvictimization. And I think that, you know, in my study, my primary interest was to first examine the cumulative impact of these exposures um, in this um, population. And also, my study tried to encapture um, the perceived level of severity that these youths um, had in terms of how they um, felt, how they perceived um, you know, each exposure, whereas ACEs um, is just a more simplistic method and in, in just measuring the total number of the exposures. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> now, Mr. Ashante Ali Davis, please. Hello. Uh, so my name is Ashante Ali Davis. I'm a first year in PH student at Tuskegee University. Uh, I would first like to take the time to thank Dr. Bouye and the CDC for allowing us to come here and present our research. The title of my research is Risk Factors for Type 2 Diabetes Among Children and Adolescents Living in a Food Desert. African American children and adolescents are vulnerable populations suffering from health disparities often more often than their parents and other adults. Many times when we have the conversation about type 2 diabetes, it is usually in the context of middle age to our elders. We, however, we would be doing a disservice if we did not address type 2 diabetes in the younger population. 
My research assesses the food environment of Macon County and how it can impact children and adolescents. Macon County is a rural county in Alabama <clears throat> and is part of the Black Belt region. Macon County has a population of 18,755. It has a 81.1% African American population and it has a 30.6% poverty rate with 95 to 100% of children within the school systems on free lunch. The purpose of my uh, research was to assess accessibility, availability, and acceptability of fresh fruits and vegetables in Macon County as risk factors for type 2 diabetes. We used an observational method to locate food retail stores in Macon County that sold fresh fruits and vegetables. We assessed supermarkets, grocery stores, and convenience stores. And we used the REDCap software statistical program for our descriptive analysis. Our, re our results showed that there were two food, uh, two food retail stores that sold fr uh, uh, fresh fruits and vegetables in Tuskegee and one in Otisoga. There were nine stores in total, so six of them were uh, convenience stores. We found that within Notasoga, even though that it was the least populous out of Tuskegee, it had the higher quality of fresh fruits and vegetables. With this, canned fruits and vegetables were more abundant and accessible to uh, children and adolescents within Macon County. This has serious uh, health implications because these children will be uh, taking part in a high sodium and high sugar diet which increases their likelihood of developing type 2 diabetes. Uh, unless the necessary interventions are taken, then the incidence of diabetes in children and adolescents will continue to rise. It is our obligation as public health officials to ensure the health and well-being of the next generation. Thank you. Are there any questions? Okay. <laughs> did you have any events or anything that you like? How did you gather your research? Like, what was the process? So, for uh, my research, we did a observational method. So, from there, we used uh, Google um, Google Maps. Uh, we spoke with people within the community to get a sense of what was available, what stores were actually there, because when you just looked on Google, there was a discrepancy between what was advertised and what was there, because they'll say that there's a grocery store there, you show up and the windows are boarded up. Any more questions? Okay, we are running out of time, so I'm going to present the poster presenters with their certificates of appreciation. It's a certificate of appreciation in recognition and appreciation of your participation in the CDC Office of Minority Health and Health Equity 2019 Public Health Ethics Forum at CDC and it's signed by Dr. Leandris LeBird, the Associate Director for Minority Health and Health Equity, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. And thank you both for your great work. And I encourage you to continue conducting research and performing research that will help us to improve the health outcomes for all. And I have the same certificate of recognition for you, Ashanti Ali Davis. Thank you. And that concludes our session.